Good afternoon, Grid Levens, and welcome to the accounting telematic sessions aimed at assisting you to pass the exams. It's the fourth term, exams is creeping closer, we're two weeks into the, ex into the term, and we have to start with revision. So today, or this afternoon, what we're looking at, we're looking at analysis and interpretation of financial information that we'll find in the accounting telematics uh, book, with the workbook, we're looking at activities number one to number six. Today, however, we will only do number six. Everything that we do today is aimed at assisting you, so you need to work with me so that we can work through the problems and then you'll understand it immediately. And some of these items that we're taking, we're taking them forward to next year when you get matric, then we have the same analysis and interpretations. So if you're with me, you've got your calculator out, you've got your pen, your pencil and your ruler and the calculator, we're looking at activity number six in the telematics. So let's first see what they're giving us. Like I said, it's activity number six. Right? They're giving us information. Clearly, I can see it's a partnership. The one partner is called Mandy. The other partner is called Chester, making up the name Manchester Traders. Right? It says, study the information and answer the questions that follow. So what information are they giving me? First of all, the first part is they're giving me information from a income statement. Okay, so that section there, I will find the sales figure, I will find the cost of sales. If they wanted to, we could have gone and calculated the gross profit by just taking my sales minus my cost of sales, then I can get the gross profit over there, right? Then also, just a little bit lower than that, take just a little bit lower than that, they're giving me the information of the net profit and how much each partner is earning. So it's 152,000 for the net profit for the year. That's what the business made. That information we got from the income statement. Then also, because it's two partners, each partner are earning, right? So here we have the total amounts earned by Mandy, which is the one partner, and the total amount that was earned by Chester. Clearly, they're earning different amounts, but those figures are normally the interest on the capital that the partners get, the salaries to partners, there might have been a bonus, so it could be bonus to partners, and obviously, the share of the remaining profit. Okay. So those earnings are made up of the interest on capital, the salaries to partners, the bonus, and the share of the remaining profit. Also, the information that they're giving us is the balance sheet that they're giving me. Okay, let's just this right so that you can see. There we go. So it's the extract of the balance sheet. So they're giving us two years, 2014 and 2015. Right? They've got fixed assets, investments, current assets, owner's equity, there you have it. That's the four items that make up the owner's equity, the capital of the two partners, together with the current account balances of the two partners. Clearly note that the one has it started with a credit and the ends with a debit, okay? If nothing is stated, then we assume that that one over there is also a credit, okay? But clearly that debit, this one, is a bit of a concern for us, meaning that that particular partner withdrew more money than what he has received. They're also giving me the current liabilities and they're giving me the non-current liabilities at the bottom, okay? If we turn the page. What else do they have there? They have a whole list of financial indicators. Here we go, financial indicators. That we're comparing the figures from 2014 to 2015. So everywhere where there's a question mark. Once we have calculated those items, we will come back to this page and we will write it in. Then we can have comparisons. Then we can see whether the percentage increased or decreased from 2014 to 2015. Right? So that is probably one that we have to calculate as well. 
together with the debt equity I see here at the bottom, right? And then there was, there's also a return from by one of the partners that was earned by Mandy, right? So that's the information. Here we have the questions coming from. The first question is calculate the percentage net profit on sales, right? So if you look at the answer book, what does the answer book say? The percentage net profit on sales. Just remember that. Here we go. That's the answer book. Okay. So again, calculate the percentage net profit on sales. So first of all, we need to know what is that formula or what is the formula for the financial indicator. But it clearly says net profit on sales. So it's the net profit for the year over your sales and then you multiply with 100 to get the answer in percentage. Okay, so what we do, we're looking for the net profit from the information given. Ah, immediately I see the net profit is 152,000 and the sales 745,500. So I've got the 152,000. Over my sales, it is 745,500. To multiply that with 100, then you get your answer. Okay. So on your calculator, we're saying it's 152,000. Divided by 745,500. Times with 100. I want the answer to be in percentage. The calculator gives me 20,38. If you want to round it off, then you say 20,4%. Okay? If they wanted two decimals, then we just have it as 20,39 because the calculator says 20,389. One decimal, 20,4%. Right, nights. That was easy. We didn't have to worry about the formula. It was just net profit on sales. Okay, that ratio has got to do with the profitability of the business. Okay, that ratio has got to do with the profitability. Clearly, we want this ratio to be as high as possible because we want always we want to increase our net profit. Right then, the second question, they're telling us, calculate the current ratio. Okay? So that information of the current ratio, I will get in the balance sheet. So first of all, the information, I will find it in the balance sheet. Okay? So when I look at the balance sheet, here's my balance sheet. Okay? I look at the balance sheet. I see these current assets. Okay, so what is the ratio all about? Here we go. The ratio is current assets is to current liabilities. Okay, so we look for the current assets for 2015. We look for the current liabilities for 2015. And then we express it as ratio. And this particular ratio has got to do with the liquidity of a business. Okay? In other words, how liquid are they? How will they be able to settle their short-term obligations? That's what that ratio is all about. Okay? So it's a, once again, quickly, current assets is to current liabilities. And I said we get that information in the balance sheet. So quickly, we have the information in front of us. Here we have the balance sheet. Ah, there's my current assets. So I'm looking for that total. There's my current liabilities. I'm looking for that total. So as it stands, it's 113,560 is to 66,000. 
800. Current assets, 113,560 is to 66,800. Right, that's the current assets, that's the current liabilities. Now, very important, grade 11, in accounting, when we want a ratio, you need to express the figure as something is to one. So the figure on the right-hand side always has to be a one. So how did I get the one on the right-hand side? I take 66,800 divided by 66,800. In other words, 66,800 divided by 66,800. And that gives me that one. So on the left-hand side, I have to take 113,560 and divide that also by 66,800. Because if I divide by 66,800 on the right-hand side, I have to divide by the same number on the left-hand side. So on my calculator, all I have to do now, I just have to divide 113,560 divided by 66,800. So let's go to the calculator quickly. And we said it's 113,560 divided by 66,800. Here we go. We're getting an answer of 1,7 is to 1. Right? And that's your final answer. Okay? Just again quickly, in accounting, if you want the ratio, the right-hand side has to equal 1. So whatever you have on the right-hand side, you divide it. You take the 66,800 in this case and divide it by 66,800 to get 1 on the right-hand side. So you have to do exactly the same on the left-hand side. Okay? But always something, in this case 1,7, is to 1, which means that for every current liability that you owe, you have 1,7 current assets to settle that particular debt. Okay. Right, we're doing great so far, Greg okay. Then, by 6.13, they are talking about what ratio tells me about the debt equity. In other words, I have to look at the debt of the company, or the business in this case, or the partnership, which is non-current liabilities. In other words, a long-term loan, like a mortgage bond. So I'm looking at non-current liabilities, and the equity is the owner's equity. Okay, So it's owner's equity, or also in this case, partner's equity. Okay, Why, Why owners? Because the owner of a partnership are called partners. So it could be partners' equity. But on your left-hand side, the debt, we're looking at the non-current liabilities. So both these informations, they will be situated in the balance sheet. Right? So that information we get from the balance sheet, we're looking for the item non-current liabilities, or sometimes it's also called just the long-term loan, and we're looking for the item owner's equity. Okay. So there we go, there's the information. Ah, there immediately I see owner's equity. So I'm looking for the figure of 473,710. If I go a little bit further, there I see the item non-current liabilities. And that is 98,840. So there I have my figures that's going to make up that particular ratio. Okay. So back to the answer sheet quickly. Here we go. It's non-current liabilities, which in this case is 94,840. And the owner's equity, 473,710. And remember what I said on top, that when we want to have a ratio, the right-hand side has to be 1. So in order for me to have 1 on the right-hand side, 
I have to divide the number by itself to get one. And then whatever I do on the right-hand side, I have to do on the left-hand side. So in order for me to get a one on the right-hand side, I'll have to divide by 47710. So now I have to do exactly the same on the left-hand side. So it's just back to the calculator quickly. 94,840 divided by 473710. There you go, and that's your answer. Now the number looks, it's a number, it's only one zero, so we have it 0, 0,20. Oh, if we wanted two places, and if we wanted one place, it just would have been 0, 0,2 is to 1. Okay? So that will be your final answer. Cut. Just remember, if you're looking for a ratio, it has to be 1 on your right-hand side. So whatever the number is on the right-hand side, we have to divide it by both sides. In other words, 473710 divided by itself and 94840 divided by 473710. Right, let's just see. Okay. Right, here we go. The next question, they're looking for what has Mandy earned? Okay, so looking at Mandy alone. So if you're looking at Mandy, there's Mandy's capital, right? This man, these current accounts, right? So we're looking at those figures and we're looking at that figure. But also, just above that, we said, what has Mandy earned? And there it is. The total amount earned by Mandy was 103,000. Remember, I said that the 103,000 could be made up of the interest on capital, the salaries to partners, the bonuses, and the share of the remaining profit. So we have to look at whatever she has earned over whatever she has put in the partnership. She has capital, and the capital was 200,000, and then it was 275,000. Although it says 2014, those figures was last year's closing, which is this year's opening. So it was 200,000, and then it was 270. 5,000, so clearly it's an increase. Then with Mandy also, it was a credit, which is good, but then all of a sudden it went to a debit. Okay? And remember, she earned 103,000. So that particular ratio here, it says calculate the percentage earned by Mandy. Right? So, so for that one, it was Mandy's earnings. In other words, whatever she earned, and his earnings over, it says, her average equity. In other words, her average owner's equity. So it's going to be over average owner's equity. But it would only be for Mandy. Okay. So again, Mandy's earnings over Mandy's average owner's equity. And we said Mandy's earnings was 103,000. So it was 103,000 over. Right? If you see the word average, then you must know we must get the average of two years. So it's 1 over 2 or 0, 0,5. Open up your bracket. Now we're looking at what was Mandy's capital. What was Mandy's capital again? Now, now although we want the figures for 2015, you must supply the, the opening balance of 2015 and the closing balance of 2015. So remember, that was the closing of 2014, which is the opening of 2015. So the average capital is the average of 200 thousand plus two hundred and seventy five thousand. So I'm looking at for capital two hundred thousand 
plus 275,000. Right. Then, also under equity, only for Mandy, I'm looking what was Mandy's current account balance. Okay. So it was a credit, and then it went to a debit again. It was a credit. Right, so I'm going to add the credit. So it's 2350. But I'm going to minus the debit of 24690. And then everything after that I will multiply with 100 because I want the answer to be in percentage. Okay, so just again quickly. The first two figures, that, will be from a capital. Right, so the average of the capital. And the next two figures will be a current account balances. Okay, that's the current account. Okay, why do we have the minus there? Because this one is a debit, okay? And all the other ones are credit. So when we punch that in on the calculator, right, so what do we have on top is 103,000. Okay, then we divide. Then you're going to punch in 0.5, which is of, open up the bracket, 200,000 plus 275,000. Plus two three five oh minus two four six nine oh. Close the bracket, multiply everything with hundred, and you get forty five comma five oh eight. So it's forty five comma five oh eight percent. If we're taking it to one decimal, it will only be forty five comma five percent. Okay? Which is a very good return because he's almost getting close to fifty percent of the money that she put in, she's getting that back. Okay? So just again quickly, it's the average of the capital, the opening balance and the closing balance. And then the current accounts, the opening balance, and the closing balance. If both are credits, then we're going to add. But here, the one is a debit, so you have to minus. Okay? If both are debits, then we have to minus. Okay? One is a debit, one is a credit, so we add, and then we minus the one that's a debit. You just have to remember, if the current account balance is a debit, you'll just have to subtract that particular one. Okay. Right, we're moving along nicely. So let's just see if there was any questions quickly. Debt equity, the business is happy. Yes, okay. Any question? Debt equity, right. What does it say? Quickly, this, it's the partner's own capital. Right, so that's own capital. And the money that we went to and borrow, that is foreign capital. Okay? You can see that the own capital is much more than the foreign capital. So this business is what we call lowly geared. Right? There's no financial risk. They are lowly geared. Right? Lowly geared, meaning own capital, is much greater than foreign capital. Okay? You can see that it's five times more, a little bit close to five times more. Okay. Right. Good eleven. Now the next question. It says use the asset test ratio to calculate the amount of stock that we have. Okay, right. So let's just go to the information quickly. Here you go. In your current assets. In your current assets, right, that figure is made up of your stock, 
you trade receivables and your cash and cash equivalents. Right? So we want to know how much stock is included in the. We only want to know the value of the stock. But that figure consists of stock, receivables, and cash and cash equivalents. Right? But the question says, use the asset test ratio to calculate the amount of stock that we have. Okay? So what does the asset test ratio say? Here you go. Asset test. Asset test tells me I take my current assets. Let's do it here. I take my current assets. Oops. Current assets. Minus my stock. Is to current liabilities. Right? So it says the asset test ratio, the current assets minus the stock is to current liabilities. So if I look at it again, it says my current assets, right? So what's the total of the current assets? That's the total of my current assets. So that figure is 113,560. That includes my stock. But the asset test ratio, now that one they're giving me, right? it says, OK, I must look at the asset test ratio. So I must look at that ratio. Now, what is that ratio saying? It says that whatever is left over, in other words, the receivables and the cash, is only 0, 0,6 of my current liabilities. So what's the current liabilities? 0, 0,6, that's the ratio that they're giving me, right? So I have my current liabilities. That total they're also giving me. Here it is, current liabilities, 66,800. Right. Times 66,800. So if I take that on the calculator, right, so it's 0 0.6 times 66,800. And this gives me 40,080. But altogether, I have 113,560. So if I take my total of my current assets minus the receivables and the cash, then I will get my stock on end. Okay, so what's the amount of the stock on end? All we have to do, we have to minus that. Why? Because it says current assets minus the stock is to current liabilities. That's the formula for my current asset, for my asset test ratio. So that answer is 0, 0,6 is to 1. Okay? But we have the current liabilities. So the current liabilities is 66,800. So this part is less than 1. That is why we had to multiply with 0, 0,6 times that to get this figure over here, OK? If it was more, then you just, just still have to multiply. So all we have to do to get the stock on air now is take 113,560 and minus 40,080. So it's 40,080 on the calculator. We can just leave that. We just have to minus 113,560. The answer of 73,000. 480, right? So that would have been your stock on hand at the end of the year. Okay, right? 
Weet je, dus het is een bit tricky quickly. Het is te gain. De asset test ratio says current assets minus the stock is to current liabilities. They're giving me that answer. That's what they're giving me in the financial indicators. So now I have to work back to get this side. Okay. Can you see that comma six is less than one? So the answer on the left hand side will have to be less than 66,800. In fact, it's 0, 0,6 times 66,800, which gives me 40,080. Right? So it's current assets minus the stock gives me that, but that's the current assets with the stock. So I'll take the current assets with the stock minus the current assets without the stock, then I will get the stock, which is 73,480. Okay. Right, so moving along grade 11. But then the next question, which is 6.3. Okay, so what do they want every year? Let's see quickly. Here we go. Okay, now this question is all about interpreting now again. Now they're asking, should the partners be satisfied with the control of the expenses? Okay, you have to explain, you have to quote the ratio, a percentage or figure to support your answer. So you might be saying a yes or no. But what you do first is first look at what particular financial indicator they want you to quote in this particular case. Okay? Now you have to look at the financial indicators quickly. So we get the financial indicators. Here we go. But what do they want? They want to see whether the business is controlling the expenses. Okay? So we have to look at the operating expenses on sales. We have to look at that. Okay? So what happened to that particular financial indicator, first of all? Okay? And if the business is controlling the operating expenses, then clearly the profits will be more. So all of these ratios, like I said earlier, all of these ratios, all of them, they have to do with the profitability. That's all profitability ratios. So what we have to look at is how is the business controlling the operating expenses. So what's happening? Last year, the ratio was 21,2. In other words, the expenses was 21,2% of the sales because it says operating expenses on sales. Okay? Last year, the operating expenses was 21.2%. This year, it's exactly 21.0%. Okay? So there's a slight decrease. Okay? But what else happened? Okay, so we need to look at the information. The operating, exp the operating profit on sales, that increase. Okay? Of course, the operating profit will increase if the expenses is decreasing. If the expenses increase, your profit will decrease. If the expenses decrease, then your profit will increase. Okay? Now, we have to look at all of the figures, and then we have to mention something. What we can also look at, my sales increase. Okay? So sales increase from 60, 630. 1,800 to 745,500. So I can mention that in my answer because they're looking for a financial indicator or any figures. Here I have the financial indicator. Okay? So what do I say? Okay, here we go. Right, so we are saying that you have to look at your operating expenses. So we're looking for that particular ratio or in this case, that particular financial indicator. So it says operating expenses on sales. Right? That's the financial indicator. What happened to that? It's 
a slight decrease. Any decrease in that, in fact, is good, right? So we're going to say at operating expenses on sales decreased from 21,2% that was in 2014 to 21,0% and that was in 2015. Okay. That's your first comment. Okay. What else can you say? Right? Sales increased. Right. And your sales increase? Right? Your sales increased from 630,000. 800 to 745,500. So sales increased from 630,800 2014 to 745,500 in 2015. What else can we say over there? Okay. We can also say that the net profit on sales what happened to the very first ratio that we were talking about? That was the net profit on sales. This one over here that we had to calculate right at the beginning. Right? That one increased from 17,2%, that was in 2014, to 20,4%, that was in 2015. Okay. Now, the bottom line here, the last one, the net profit is increasing, right? So, and can you see that this is decreasing? Clearly, if the operating expenses is decreasing, the net profit on sales will then increase. So this business, should the partners be satisfied with the control of the expenses? Clearly the answer has to be yes. Okay. So you have to answer yes, but also you have to show the financial indicators to support you saying yes. Okay. Just again. Operating expenses, so you're looking for operating expenses on sales. Okay. Your sales increased, right? Remember that was a slight, slight, slight decrease, which is good. Net profit on sales, that also increased. Why? Because the operating expenses was less. Okay? The partners will be satisfied with that one. Okay? Grade 11, very important. You need to make sure that you have to quote the financial indicator, the trend, this the increase or the decrease, that's the trend. And then you supply the figures. Okay? That's financial indicator. Right. First mention the financial indicator. Then we talk about the trend and then you supply the figure. Whenever you give a comment and they're saying, quote, ratios, percentages, and figures to support. You do it in this particular order, please. First the financial indicator, then the trend, then the figure. Okay. Right, so let's see what they want for 6.4. It says, comment on the liquidity. So it's another comment question. And what do they want? We're looking for liquidity, right? We want ratios, percentages, and figure. To support your comment, we're looking at three liquidity. Okay? Just now what I said, when we're commenting, we're looking for financial indicator. We're looking for the trend. And then we're looking for figures. And that's how you quote. So what we're looking for, we're looking for three liquidity financial indicators. 
the trend, it's either the increase or the decrease. Okay? And then the figures will be supplied. So what we're looking for, we're looking for the financial indicators regarding liquidity. So we back at the financial indicators. So here we are. Right though. Like I said earlier, from gross profit on sales till the net profit on sales, that is going to do with the profitability. Okay? Then from your current ratio, right down until your creditors payment. Right, so it's the current ratio, the asset test ratio, the stock turnover, the debtors collection, and the creditors payment. They all have got to do with liquidity. Okay. And you have to supply the figures. Now earlier, we went to go and calculate the current ratio, right? And that was one comma seven is to one. Right. So now, now we have the ratio. Now we can see the trend. It's increasing or decreasing, and we have the figures. So we can choose any of them. Okay, and then we'll have to make an overall assessment. Okay, so if we look at the debtors, for example, the debtors collection period, that means how long is the debtors taking to pay us? Okay, so last year, on average, the debtors was taking 45 days. But this year, on average, they're taking 30 days. So that is good, which means money is coming in quicker. The debtor owes us. And instead of taking 45 days to pay, he's paying in 30 days, which means we're getting in money. And it's improving by 15 days, right? The same with the creditors' payment. We are taking, last year we took 60 days to pay, right? This year we're taking 60 days to pay as well, okay? We want to try and delay the payment for as long as possible. Okay? So there's nothing wrong with that. Then the stock turnover. Last year it was 4,5 times. This year it is 6 times, which means the stock is coming in and it's going out. Coming in and going out. Coming in and going out. 4.5 times last year. This time it's 6 here, which means the stock is not staying in the warehouse. It's coming in and out, in and out. It's going in and out. The stock turnover rate is quicker, which is good for a business. Okay? So the number of days stock on hand is actually less, which is good. Then the stock won't be getting old in the warehouse. Then we have the asset test ratio, and then we have the current ratio. So all you have to do, you have to choose any three, and you have to comment. Okay? So what we do, we start, and in this particular order, please. Financial indicator, the trend, and then the figure, okay? So we're going to take, we're going to start with the first one. Right, so there we go, they say current ratio. Right, so what, am I, what did I do now? I identified the financial indicator I'm going to talk about, right? Then in the information, right, so there's the current ratio. So what happened? In 2014, it was 2,5. In 2015, it's 1,7. There's a decrease. So the trend, current ratio, decreased. From what was it last year? Last year, 2,5 is to 1. Right? So we put the 2,5 is to 1. That was in 2014. And it's decreasing to 1,7 is to 1. That is in 2015. Okay. So it's financial indicator, trend, and then figures. Okay. Now they're looking for three. So we have one. The next one we can talk about is the asset test ratio. What happened to the asset test ratio? It was 0 0,8. And this year it's 0 0,6 is to 1. Also a slight decrease. Okay? So we have the financial indicator. We have the financial indicator. Now we're looking for the trend. Right? So the trend clearly is a decrease. But what was it last year? 
oops, decreased. So decreased from 0 0.8 is to 1. That was in 2014 to 0 0.6 is to 1, and that was in 2015. Okay. Just again, as a test ratio, that's the financial indicator. Decreased, that's the trend, and then you supply the figures. Okay. The third one we can talk about, we can talk about the stock turnover. Right, the stock turnover, right? There we have the financial indicator. What's the trend? It increased. Right? But from 4,5 times in 2014 to 6 times in 2015. Okay. What they're looking for? They only want 3. We have the 3, but we didn't have to take that three. We could have taken the debtor's collection if we wanted to. Right? We could have taken debtor's collection. Or we could have taken creditor's payment. But they only wanted three, but let's just also complete that too. Then we know, just in case they want more, then we have a large variety to choose from. From that five, we can, they only wanted three, but let's do the five so that we know what we have to do. Okay, so we look at the data's collection quickly. Data's collection, last year it was 45 days. Now it's 30 days, okay? So it's a decrease, but this time, a decreased from 45 days in 2014 to 30 days in 2015. Now that is something good. Why? Because the debtors are taking Quicker, they're settling the debt earlier, right? So this, that means money is coming into the company or into the business or into the partnership for this matter. The money we're getting earlier from the debtors. So although it's a decrease, it's actually something good. And we want the debtors to pay as soon as possible. Normally, after 30 days, we want the debtors to settle the debts, okay? With the creditors' payment, we normally want to pay the creditors as after 60 or 90 days. So we can say it remained constant at 60 days. Okay. So in other words, we're only paying them after 60 days. So this partnership won't have any liquidity problems. Okay. Comment on the liquidity, which means the liquidity, the word liquidity, like I said earlier, it's got to do with short-term debt. Will the business be able to settle the short-term debt? Everything looks favorable. The debtors are paying earlier. The stock turnover rate is increasing. Right? The creditors are getting paid after 60 days. This business will be able to settle the short-term debt. There's no liquidity, no problems. Liquidity. Right, that is good. The partnership should be able to settle 
so term. Just remember, so termed it. In other words, the debts that is payable within a year, the short term debt, the partners will be able to settle the short term debts. Okay. Quite a lot that we wrote, but just remember that they only wanted three, but we gave five, and we gave, at the bottom, we gave a general explanation. Okay. Let me just see. Okay, looks like this time. Okay. There is still 6.5, and then we should be able to do that, right? Let's just see if there's enough time. Just remember that you only have to do three of the financial indicators, okay? But also the last one, which is 6.5, I think. We just have to finish this. And then it looks like there is two more questions that we should be able to answer, but that's not difficult. Let's just look at this one and make sure we understand. Then you should be able to answer the, the other two on your own. It says, Chester feels that Mandy's drawings are unreasonable. Quote figures to support his opinion. How does this affect the business? Now remember, there's two partners in this business. One is called Chester. The other one is called Mandy. Okay, here we go. That is the information. It says Mandy is earning so much and Chester is earning so much. Remember, the earnings is coming from the bonuses, the share of the profit. Then also it says that the drawings is having a negative effect, right? So where do we find the drawings? The drawings will be in the current accounts. Okay? The drawings is normally in the current accounts. So if you're looking at Chester, what happened? Sorry, I mean Mandy. Right? Chester feels that Mandy's drawings is unreasonable. So what happened to Mandy's current account? It was a credit, and then it went to a debit. Right? So now that is of concern to Chester, because Mandy is withdrawing more money than what she is earning. Okay, so now what do we have to do or what do we have to look at that now, right? So it says by 6.5, just a few that Mandy's drawings are unreasonable. Again, quote figures to support the opinion. So now we have to look at Mandy's current account. So what happened to Mandy's current account? Mandy's current account the balance right. a current account balance how much was it in 2014 right. it was a favorable balance current account balance moved from a favorable In other words, it was a credit balance, right? Moved from a favorable 2,350, it was in 2014, right? To an unfavorable 2,000, it was a debit, right? Of 24,000. 690. So where did I see that in the information? Oops, that's just here below. Here we go. But it was a favorable 2,350, and it went to an unfavorable of 24,690, meaning that in 2015, she's actually withdrawing more money than what she is earning. That's why it has a debit, and in fact, she withdrew everything and 24,690 more than what she was earning, okay? So it moved from a favorable credit to an unfavorable debit of 24,690, right? And that puts strain on the strain on the partnership's cash flow. 
strains, put strain on the partner's cash flow. Right? But this also, it improved it improved her earnings or her percentage return. Okay. There we go. First of all, it put strain on the, on the partnership's cash flow, but it improved her percentage return. This is not only for Mandy. Where did I see that percentage return? We had to calculate that earlier. Remember here, it was the percentage return for Mandy. This came to 45%. That came to 45,5%. Right? So last year, her percentage was 34,4. Now she's earning 45,5. Why? Because she, remember that debit we had to minus. Right? So it, although it put strain on the on the partnership, it also improved her percentage return. Okay, grade 11. There is still two more questions that we had to, had to get to. Unfortunately, we won't be able to get to them today, but it was nice having you, right? It's just 6.6. .6. It's just also just a comment question. You should know how to do it, right? I said the financial indicator, the trend, and the figures. So it's just 6.6 .6 and 6.7. It was nice working with you. Until next time, goodbye. Thank you very much, Great Living.